Season two is about to begin. Of course, the first season with the Kings, we kept the roster the same to see how everything would play out. Our first off season, we were a little bit, uh, a little bit reserved, a little bit hesitant, not exactly eager to spend a ton of money, and it's led us to having a very, a very young team at this point in time. We also left the last episode with the question of whether or not we should sign some of our younger players, including one Alex Turcott, who was just recently signed by the Kings in real life. And that brings me to what this team is looking like to begin this season. Alex Turcott has been signed and will be playing on the top line next to Alex Iafalo and Anze Kopitar. Our second line featuring a nice little plus five is Carl Grundstrom, Adrian Kempe, and Dustin Brown. A third line of Trevor Moore, Blake Lazat, and Jeff Carter. And the fourth line, of course, Austin Wagner, Mike Amadio, and Matt Luff. So we are going to be going with these younger players who were on the fringe. Luff, Lazat, thought we might start them in the AHL. We're going to give them an opportunity this year. Defensively, Yuri Zikov has been signed. Now, we don't know how good he is, and that leads to one of the biggest complaints in the comments section from the last episode. That being uh, me leaving Fog of War on for the draft. Now, here's the thing. Normally, in every other series, we leave Fog of War off. And that way we know how good somebody is overall and potential-wise right out of the gates. The point of having Fog of War on is so that, you know, I kind of know the general range of how good somebody is. I know what their role is, but in terms of trading, it makes it that much more difficult. I'm not against turning it off, but admittedly, part of me wants to leave it on just because it's it's different. I've never had a series since Fog of War has been added in for the most part where I, aside from the Carolina series, of course, where we had similar rules, where I stuck to it. And just said, no, you know what, screw it. We're not going to know how good these guys are until we find out. Until we actively find out. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly. But regardless, Yuri Zekoff is going to start this season next to Drew Doughty. Second uh, pairing is going to be Sean Walker. We're going to give Tobias Bjornfod an opportunity. And we're also going to give Kale Clegg an opportunity at the NHL level. We're going to throw the youth out there. We're going to see what the hell they can do. And if it doesn't work, obviously we have players in the AHL that we can throw out there, and that way we can see what happens. Jonathan Quick and Vianney Vevelainen are going to be the one-two punch in goal. Of course, Cal Peterson's still there. You saw Ricola and Martin Furk are the healthy scratches. So this team lines up with how I need to set up teams, of course. Anze Kopitar not allowed on the lower line. Uh, Adrian Kempe and Dustin Brown there. Thankfully, Jeff Carter is third-line eligible which is pretty nice and open up, and opens up that spot for Carl Grundstrom on that second line. Down in the AHL, I mean, again, things are still looking okay, mainly because of Anderson, Dolan, Kapari, and Velarde. Defensively, Mikey Anderson, the main player there. Some defensive additions are still very much needed as we move forward. But the rosters are set. Everything is pretty much good to go. Unless I forgot to set up the scouts, which I don't think I did. But we will double check that. The coaching staff as well uh, is not in order. Did I forget to fill out the coaching staff? I could have sworn I sent out offers here. I did. Okay, so we got to wait to see if those come back. And then for our scouts, I did forget to... Actually, no, I didn't. That's right, we have our NHL scouts. We don't have AHL scouts here. Which some people are like, yeah, what's the point? But you know what? We're going to try it because, again, it's different. So we are good to go. We just need those coaching offers to go through, and we will be fine. And we'll be able to sim and see what happens this season. The only thing I want to do is double-check Kopitar, Carter, and Dowdy. Perfect. Everything's good. I mean, the team might not be. <laughs> But everything's looking good. Of course, we dropped down the scoring a little bit. We'll see whether or not that's as low as we want it to be. And again, rules-wise, we're looking decent. Metropolitan's good to go. This team is eligible. Lutzer rejects, which is... 
annoying. So let's go figure out the coaching staff really quickly. That was the associate coach. We're looking for a forward specialist as a coach. So let's see what we have here. You can see why Lutzer was the target. Uh, let's go for Kerslake. The Kurs Lake. Because why the hell not? Hopefully he signs. I'm not going to send him the max offer. Not going to waste that amount of time. So, for the most part, this season is going to be seeing how the youth reacts to being at the NHL level and adjusting and adapting. Of course, the last episode, son of a bitch. The last episode was kind of highlighted by the decision to not move on from Jeff Carter and Sean Walker at the draft. Uh, you know, I think Carter's likely to be moved, but you see who he's playing with on the third line this year. You know, likely that they're going to benefit well from playing with somebody of his caliber. We'll see ultimately, though, how this season plays out. Of course, with this team, we are now eligible to move on Zay Kopitar. He has a seven-team trade list at this point. Dustin Brown has a seven-team no-trade list. Drew Doughty cannot be moved until the 2024-2025 season. But aside from that, we're not restricted in who we can move. Uh, Jeff Carter, son of a bitch, somebody just sign. You know, Jeff Carter can be moved. Jonathan Quick could be moved if we wanted him to be. Don't really think there's too much of a point in moving him, though. I mean, the goaltending is going to be bad enough as it is. Uh, let's just, okay, who else was a B-minus forward specialist? Pyatt, for the love of God. I'm just going to max this out because I'm sick and tired of this again. One of the things I've argued for can we please get a button? We're not going to get it this year, I know, but can we please get a button that just sends the max offer? Or have it be FIFA style where I can hit Y and then adjust individual numerals, numeric values. Please, anything other than having to sit there and wait for it to scroll for six and a half years, fuck off. The size of the team's market. You better be saying it's too big of a market and you don't want to live in Los Angeles. Because good God, man. That is now three coaches to reject. They would rather sit at home, apparently. Oh, my God. Let's go. Actually, that's four. Let's go with Lutzer. I'm going to offer you a max deal. Because I, I don't know if I offered you a max deal before. So isn't this fun? Scrolling. So much scrolling. How sweet is this scrolling? It's so much better than just having a goddamn button to send a max offer. Adele, hello. How would you like a one-year deal as an NHL associate? Because why the hell not? We need somebody. Please. Please, please, please. Just even, even a C-rated coach at this point will be good enough for me. Can we have the coaching staff set? Lutzer, thank you for signing. Thank God. Sorry, Adele. Goodbye. So let's go ahead and see what the grades look like to start this season. We begin things against the Schwill Predators. The Schwill. Let's see how we compare. 86 offense, 80 defense, 80 goaltending. Okay. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> By design... It's bad. It's going to take a little bit to build ourselves out of this, but it could be a hell of a lot worse. Now, do we have confirmation on how good Zekoff is? Turcotte, hello. Confirmed 82 overall. Very, very nice. We don't yet know about the attributes, but yeah, Alex Turcotte, looking pretty good. Defensively, Zekoff, not a confirmed 78. We know he's a medium top four, though. Which is very nice. He's going to be probably a 77, 78, 79 at best. And then Bjorn fought at the 74, of course. I mean, I'm a little bit worried about trotting out a defense that's that weak on paper. And Bjorn fought might not benefit well from being in the NHL as opposed to the AHL. But then again, he didn't really benefit all that well from, you know... From playing in the AHL last year. So we're going to see how this goes down. I believe he went up by two overall points last year. We did beat Nashville 7-2. to two To begin the season. So we always have that going for us. 
which is nice. When in doubt. When in doubt. We're looking good and everything is fine. Ideally. Hopefully. Possibly. Potentially. Bjorn Fott breaks his nose, so he'll be out for a little bit as we lost to the Anaheim Ducks 6-3. to Losing record right now, which is not surprising. Now, the one thing we did not talk about is goals for the season. Because in the comments, nobody left a goal for the season aside from one person. Uh, that was <laughs> Steve Swanson saying, Goal! Win a home game. Which, uh, have, have we actually done that yet? Have we? We did. We beat Detroit. Submission accomplished. We'll have goals for the season next year. Hopefully, comment section, you let me down a little bit. You let me down a little bit. 3-7-2 and two, through the opening month isn't exactly ideal. Fun fact, though, we're not the worst team in the division. Somehow the San Jose Sharks continue to disappoint. It's impressive, really. Iafalo is a beast. Kopitar looking good. Turcotte is a point of game through his first 12 games. That's spectacular. Uh, the second line in terms of defense is struggling, but the point totals are okay. Uh, ooh, Trevor Moore, Blake Lazat, Carter. Okay, they're they're not exactly getting the offense that I, I would have hoped for. Uh, for some reason, oh, okay, that's Rika Lot. I was going to say, like, what's, up, what's up with that? What's up with that? We'll just leave that as a minus. Zekoff is a confirm. 77. Wow, Drew Doughty. 0.5 points per game. We are... We're going to be so bad. Vevelinen. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Okay. So, we're going to... We're going to give the youngins a bit more of an opportunity. Right? But not much of one. Because I don't think we want to leave them, you know, hanging out to dry, essentially. Like, it's it's going to be brutal, but we can give them a taste of the NHL, send them down, probably, you know, just to try and secure the number one odds in the upcoming draft lottery. And we'll try to make the best of it from there. Let's see what happens through November. Again, we'll take a look. You know, at, wow, we just beat Tampa 6-1. to one. And the New York Islanders have fired their head coach. Say goodbye to Barry Trotz. That's insane. But, of course, we'll take a look around the league, you know, see what the totals ended up being, see if we still need to adjust uh, the scoring settings at all, see if it's still a bit too much, which, I don't know, looking at it, it might be. I mean, it's, I don't know, you get some high-scoring games and you get, like, a 2-1 to one shootout loss, so... It can be pretty inconsistent, but yeah, right now it's all looking good. Yuri Zikoff is going to miss a couple of weeks in his rookie season. Actually, eight days to be exact, as we always seem to get injured against the Ducks. 6-17-4, worst team in the division. I want to sim ahead until Zikoff is healthy, and then that way we can get a look at the stats for our starters. Tobias Bjorn fought, I don't believe, was missing any time. He might have. Zekoff is supposed to be healthy, and he is. Okay, there we go. So a quick look at the team. So let's take out Ricola, bring in Zekoff, and let's see how the team is doing at this point in time. So Alex Iafalo, 27 points in 29 games. Honestly, pretty good. 28 penalty minutes is a bit concerning. Not surprised, of course, that he's a minus player. But I'm pretty happy with that production. I mean, how could I not be? He was just over a point a game last year. This time out, he's just under. So no real surprise. His shooting percentage is a little bit lower, so that makes sense. Anze Kopitar. 28 points in 29 games. Happy with that. Alex Turcotte, 26 points, 15 goals in 29 games. Happy with that as well. Carl Grundstrom, 22 points. Pretty good. 20 points for Kempe. Dustin Brown, 29 points in 29 games. That's fantastic. Third line, Trevor Moore just doesn't have it right now. Three points. Six for Blake Lazat. That third line is brutal. Jeff Carter's also taking a crap ton of penalties. The fourth line, Wagner, Amadio, and Luff. That's just not working either. 
So Moore, Lazat, and Luff. I think we're going to be sending them down as long as I can get away with it. And we're going to go with some vets. That experiment in terms of working things out with them. Oh god, they might all be affected by waivers. Nope, no waivers. Okay. Cool. We'd be under the cap, though. Obviously. Uh, so we're gonna need... We have Ferk. I think we're gonna go... Could go with Conacher and Carr. Although, before I was tempted to call up the likes of Asimont, Rempal, and I believe Morrison was the other one. Just based off of age. Morrison at 23. Acemont and Rempal are definitely going to be called up. Morrison's 23. Rimshuk can stay. Let's call up Morrison as well. So we would be under the cap. I'm going to have to sign a free agent cap dump really quickly. And this might mean Morrison doesn't get the call up, but that's fine. Let's see who's out there that we can sign right now. And then that way we can have them take up a little bit of the cap and be good to go. Now, technically, I'm going to sign them to a one-year deal anyway, so like a no-trade or no-movement wouldn't be a factor. Holy hell! Alex Petrangelo, Taylor Hall, Eric Halla, and Ryan Strom are all still UFAs. Huh. Well, that's stunning. Wow, Ersan's a backup already, huh? Samuel or something. We should sign that. Okay, hold on. We we hit, we need to have a conversation here. That's what we need to have. What are we at contract wise? Forty five with three exemptions. How many? Oh, I need to go back. How many goaltenders do I have on roster right now? How many goalies do I have on roster right now? Please tell me it's not six. Two, three, four, five dicks. Okay. Okay. Cal Peterson's probably going to have to be dealt here. We're going to go to the trade finder to see. Oh, menu lag. You're spectacular. We're going to go to the trade finder to see if we can find a deal for Peterson because I really want to bring in Airsaw. It makes all the sense in the world to do that. All the sense in the world to do that. Or we trade Valalta because Justice is the same overall in a year younger, or I get rid of Ingham, who's a medium backup. I'm going to see if there's a deal out there for Ingham. Is there? There's not. In fairness, we have to move Peterson because they saw him as a backup. Yeah. Because Vevelinen's going to stay. Cal Peterson, no trades. Shit. Uh, huh. I can't sign her son then. I can't do it. Because there's going to be no deals for quick. I don't want to immediately flip Vevelinen. Yeah, so we're stuck. Okay, well that idea is out the door already for that goaltender. It was worth double checking at least, I would say. And defensively, Alex frickin' Petrangelo is available. As is Gustav Olofsson. Petra wants 5.8. Right now, it makes all the sense in the world to sign Alex Petrangelo and spin the wheel to see if he gets a no-movement clause. Makes all the sense in the world. So we'd, ha we'd have a 50-50 shot of being allowed to trade Petro at the, at the uh, not the draft, but at the deadline. 50-50 shot. We have to take it. We have to take it. We have the money to sign and we have the space. So if Alex Petrangelo is willing to sign, we're going to do it. Now the thing is, I do uh, have the option to find out beforehand on a wheel spin whether or not he's going to have the, uh, you know, the no movement clause or not. So what we are going to do is set up a wheel here. And we are going to be good to go. So with that, with that, with that, with that, I think we're good to go. And we are going to see 
if we are going to be able to keep Mr. P or if we're even going to go for Mr. Petrangelo at all. So no movement clause and free. If it lands on free, I can move him. If it lands on no movement clause, he stays. And Petrangelo. Oh my god, we were that close. We were that close. Damn it. We were that close to getting Alex Petrangelo and being able to flip him. We can't flip him. I could still sign him. And as a favor to Alex Petrangelo, I'm still going to send him an offer. We're just not going to be allowed to move him. That was so incredibly close. So incredibly close for him. So Alex Petrangelo will hopefully sign. He'll be on a no movement. He'll be here for the rest of the year. Just kind of as a favor to him to stop a premier player from having his career be completely disrupted. And obviously for us, it gives me cap maneuverability, which is really good news. Now honestly, makes no sense to not also go for Taylor Hall. Makes all the sense in the world. And we're going to do the exact same thing. As I hit a button a tad bit early, I didn't realize the... Uh, I didn't realize that was up there. There we go. That's the one that we want. See, that's why you double-check these things. First episode I've had to do something like this in a while. So for Taylor Hall, are we going to have the ability to sign him or not? Okay. Damn it. That is incredibly bad luck. So we're going to be signing Taylor Hall as well, but he is also going to be stuck on this team for the season. It's worth it. It'll make our team better. Uh, I don't know if we'll be keeping him beyond this year. It probably won't really increase our chances of success. Like, I know in theory it's making our team better, but we're still going to be bad enough that it's not really going to play a factor. And to be honest, they might reject. But I'm, I'm doing that because I really don't want to see this top-notch talent just go to waste. And that's what it would be doing. They would just be going to waste. So we're going to see if they sign first, and then we'll go about Hala, potentially, and Strom. As we lose to San Jose, we beat Minnesota in a shootout. Hall signs, Petrangelo signs. How's that for a mini-trade deadline? And that obviously takes up a lot of cap space on this team. So, two very interesting moves, especially if we were cup contenders, uh, but we're not. So, Petrangelo will be called up in a moment, but for now at least, we go back over here. Luff, Moore, and Lazat will be down. Taylor Hall's on the way up. Asimont and Ron Paul also on the way up. It's perfect that we can send down that trio without having to worry about waivers this season. So, we could bring in Eric Halla, and he would actually fit in perfectly. As a second liner, he would fit in perfectly. It would bump Turcotte down to the third line with Grundstrom and Carter. Otherwise, right now, Grundstrom, no matter what, is being sent down to the third line. It's just, what do I want to do with Turcotte? Could still keep him on the power play. Do I want to try and save Eric Halla and potentially be able to deal him at least? We have 11 million in space. I feel like I have to do that. It makes all the sense in the world to try and bring in Eric Halla with the opportunity of flipping him. Makes all the sense in the world. So, let's just go with best lines here for the moment. And I'm going to go send an offer to Eric Halla. And we're going to see if this works out for us. It's going to be the same exact deal as before. Still hit that button too early, but that's okay. Let's spin the wheel. If it lands on no movement clause three straight times, then maybe this wheel's rigged. I'm still going to sign him. I'm still going to sign him. We're going to bring in Eric Halla. So, Petrangelo, Hall... And Halla 
all in an effort. I don't have the roster space to sign Strom unless I deal Jeff Carter. But all in an effort to just stop these guys from rotting away on the free agent list and doing nothing. Halla immediately accepted. Desperate to play hockey. So looking at the forwards again, top three. I'm going to need to bump up Eric Halla here. Let's send down AC Mott and Rempal. There's no way they get claimed, right? They're not affected by waivers anyway. So top three, top six, third line, fourth line, and one healthy scratch, which might end up being AC Mott again or Conacher. Is Daniel Carr listed as a two-way? He's listed as a sniper. AC Mott listed as a two-way, but he's not a good one. Uh, let's go Let's go with Corey Conacher as our healthy scratch for the rest of the year. So this team uh, just changed a lot, not exactly by design. Now, Kale Clegg is up to a medium top six. So he wasn't earlier. He is now, which means he's going to be staying on roster. Zikoff and Bjorn Fott, though, are going to be spared. For the rest of the season. So that's five. And then Petrangelo was six. And from there, Connaughton or Nelson will be seven. Let's go with Kevin Connaughton. So this team just got a major boost. We're allowed to sign anybody we want after August 1st. I just never expected those guys to be there. That completely took a turn. Three straight times, though, we struck out. On being able to potentially deal these players which really sucks so I mean technically they're gonna make our roster better for the season but I mean like I said really it's more out of a favor to them to stop us from being absolute garbage <laughs> but Kale Clegg stepping up at the midway point of the season technically I could have sent him down if I wanted to because it's like, okay, he didn't start the season there, but we'll just keep it simplistic and keep him there. And then again, forward-wise, it's pretty straightforward as well. Pun not intended. So looking at the team, I think it is still pretty straightforward. Jeff Carter's going to be flipped. So it's going to be Grundstrom, Carter, and Turcotte. Turcotte can actually play center, which is pretty good news. Third line, of, or second line, of Hala, Kempe, and Brown. Which I'm intrigued to see who the better center is for now. It'll be Kempe. And then we're going to have you follow Kopitar and Hall. And a fourth line of Wagner, Amadio, and Firk. Firk is a terrible fit on that line. Terrible. But we really have no choice. I can change him to a grinder. For the sake of hoping it's a better fit, but it's not looking that good. There are some player types I'd like to change, but at the end of the day, it uh, it's not really going to help. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not really going to help. As I was hoping to find a way to not have a minus there. Petrangelo and Dowdy. Dowdy's only top four. We could send Drew down. If we wanted to. Is there a combo that will work here? So what if I put Dowdy here? Clegg here. Is there a combination that stops that second pairing from having a minus? No, there isn't. What if I take out Ricola and bring in Kevin Connaughton? Is there a combination? There we go. Kevin Connaughton works really well with Alex Petrangelo. Go figure. So I think we're going to go Walker and Roy, Connaughton and Doughty, Clay and Petrangelo, just to avoid the minuses. That's ridiculous. That's going to be the team for the moment. The pluses could be a little bit better if we really wanted it to be. But for now, it's fine. Let's just go best lines down in the AHL, which I mean, I don't want to call the AHL a shit show at this point. But Fogamo, Sodergran, and Kapari certainly need to end up back in the lineup. So let's get Fogamo there. Sutter can take a seat. Or actually, Sodergran there. Fogamo there. 
And who else are we going to take out here? Probably Carr. Sorry, Daniel, but you get to take a seat. 4-1 Rasmus Kapari. And then defensively, just want to make sure that nobody is scratched who shouldn't be. And there's a couple of them. There's a couple of them. Brickley is a little bit unimportant to us at this point. Let's get him set up there. I don't know when the Ontario Reign signed Alex Biega, but we don't really need him. And Austin Strand, I love you. But Moverer, whose name I'm probably butchering, is a little bit more important. Let's get Sean Dersey in there as well. So the teams are yet again set up. A lot of changes. A lot of changes. Some of them not even for the better. It's just kind of how it worked out. I mean, again, technically, the NHL team just got a hell of a lot better, though. Although, really, it kind of defeated the purpose. But now it's a 91 offense, an 83 defense, and 80 goaltending. Taylor Hall showing up as our best player. Again, this was just a favor to Hall, Petrangelo, and to Eric Halla just to stop them from wasting away on the free agent list for the year. They'll have the opportunity to kind of build themselves back up a little bit. I mean, I don't expect us to still be going on a massive winning streak anytime soon, and we're still not. We've lost three, or actually four out of the first five games that we played with those additions. So, that's the thing. It, it was worth it. It was worth it. And again, we had that 50-50 shot. Somehow we lost with all three of them. We had that 50-50 shot. I'm actually going to, here, you know what? For the hell of it, let's spin the wheel again. Is it rigged? Is it rigged? Oh, my God. The very first one we did where it was just a test, it landed on free. That's disgraceful. <laughs> so that's just horrible luck, case in point. We end up keeping all three of them, salvaging their careers at least. We are dead last in the Pacific, just over the halfway point of the season, which is really where... We want to be, as of January 1st, how do we compare 11 wins you would expect, you would presume, would be the least amount in the league. We are bottom four. Seven wins for the Islanders. Oh, my God. Well, if we were able to out-tank them before, we're certainly not going to be able to out-tank them now. Wow. Wow. Eight overtime losses. We have six regulation plus overtime wins, though, which is the fewest in the league. That is absolutely insane how low the Islanders' point percentage is. Under 25%. Hopefully they pick it up a little bit, though. <laughs> and hopefully we continue to lose some games. That would be that would be wonderful. That would, in fact, be wonderful. So let's go ahead and sim through January. Of course, as we get closer to the deadline, the conversation will come up as to whether or not we're going to look to trade the likes of Jeff Carter. And really, in terms of anybody else, it's, it's slim pickings in terms of who we can move off of this team to bring in assets. The good thing is, though, like forward prospects, we're still looking fine. The addition of Turcotte's huge. Defensive prospects need to continue to be the focus. Zekoff is obviously a tremendous pickup for us. And looking at the upcoming draft class, uh, this is the Brant Clark draft. There are two computer-generated players that are way up here. Olvestad's way up there as well. Not the best draft for defensemen unless someone like Rodine, who's computer-generated, ends up being really good. So we're going to have to try and make the best of it. But for now, I mean, things are still looking okay. Just 13 wins. We have two games left in the month of January. We beat the Blue Jackets and we beat the Canadiens 15, 29, and 9, which is right where we want to be. Still bottom of the Pacific Division. Anze Kopitar still looking pretty good to this point. How do we compare to the rest of the league? Now bottom three. The Islanders are picking up some momentum. We're the worst team in terms of ROW. Montreal way down here as well. So right now the dream is alive of us securing a top four draft pick. At the very least. Which is music to my ears. In terms of this team. Yeah, Follow's still having a good season. How's Taylor Hall done? 
Taylor Hall's been great, unsurprisingly. I mean, again, I just imagine what his trade value is. We're going to look in a minute. Eric Halla is a legitimate 87. 18 points in 22 games. God, if only we could have traded these guys. We could have cleaned up. We could have cleaned up. Jeff Carter only has 18 points. He's a minus 28. A brutal season for Jeff Carter. Petrangelo, 10 points and a plus 3, which is honestly impressive for how bad this team is. This has got to be weird to see Petrangelo in a Kings jersey, by the way. Drew Doughty has had a, just an abysmal season. He and Kevin Connaughton have not worked out well together at all. And Jonathan Quick and Vienny Vevelinen. Vevelinen has three wins in 18 appearances. Quick has 12 wins in 46. So quickly, quickly here, I think, call it a hunch. We're going to be sellers at the deadline, right? We're going to be sellers. So when it comes when it comes to trading, right? When it comes to trading. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How do we how do we want to handle this? When it comes to trading, right? When it comes to trading. I'm going to repeat myself a couple more times while I just correct something on the rules list and read back through the rules just to double check to make sure I don't screw anything up. That pick has a hell of a lot of value. Goalie wise, Gleboff is a medium elite 54 overall, which is very nice. I mean, no intentions of moving him right now. Cal Peterson, we cannot get anything for Justice and Velalta. Both stay for the moment. Ingham, any interest in you? No. And then what about, I'm going to keep Vevelinen for at least the season. I don't want to immediately sign and flip him. Jonathan Quick, no interest whatsoever. Defensively, oh my God, Petrangelo. If only we could have moved him. <laughs> if only. Clegg's going nowhere. Dowdy, of course, is going nowhere. Walker. Might end up regretting that contract. Time will tell. He and Roy certainly are staying. Bjorn fought up to a 76. Anderson still has a decent shot of making it. Dursey might have a potential shot here. For the most part, I want to see if these guys can and will develop at all. Apparently, I signed Alex Biega. I don't even remember that. <laughs> no offense, Alex, but I don't remember that. So, we get to Jeff Carter. Dustin Brown could be dealt. It'd be a seven-team no-trade list, which means the worst seven teams in the league I could not trade him to, but I could trade him to anybody else. I want to see what the interest level is. Nobody's interested in Dustin Brown. Wow. What about Jeff Carter? Anybody? No takers on Jeff Carter. And again, I'm searching open block. That is unfortunate, as is Martin Lang not being good. That's also unfortunate. Wingers, again, I can't deal Taylor Hall. I'm intrigued. I can't deal him, but, like, what type of deals? Okay, apparently nobody has the value to get Taylor Hall either. So, yeah, that wasn't even a guarantee we'd be able to get rid of him, I guess. Can I deal Martin Furk for anything? No. <laughs> no one wants to move. No one wants to move. And then for centers, Kempe's value. Wow, Kempe's value is through the roof right now. Can we get anything for him? No one's no one's looking to budge right now. I guess we're going to have to sim a little bit further to see what else is going on around the league and what else we can do. So we'll do that. We'll sim a little bit further ahead. And hopefully be able to tear down this team a little bit more. Let's sim two weeks. We play six games in that time. We beat Toronto 4-2. to two. The decision to bring on Taylor Hall, Petrangelo, and Hall out of the kindness of my heart might come back to haunt me. We beat New Jersey 1-0. to nothing. Lose to Calgary, so 500 hockey right now. We beat Boston 7-4. to four. The Blues fired their head coach the day after we beat them. <laughs> That is, that's a bad sign. The Blues are also dead last in the Central. So 19-31-9, still have a good shot of being the worst team in the league. Do we have the ability 
Do we have the ability to make something happen here? I haven't set up the trade block, but I think I know how I might want to. And we might just go completely open and see what offers are out there. Is there anybody interested in Adrian Kempe? No. That's insane to me. Not that I even want to get rid of him. I was just intrigued at what the value was. You follow Grundstrom, and then on that right-hand side, Dustin Brown. Anybody interested? Still nobody interested in Dustin Brown. What about Jeff Carter? Still nobody interested in Jeff Carter. So we might be stuck here. I mean, in terms of shopping our players, we might be absolutely stuck. Which is pretty rough. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to the trade block. And we're just going to open up the block completely. I'm going to say, it's open season. Send an offer for whoever you want. And we will make the most of it. We'll make the most of it. And obviously, you know, I'm still not allowed to trade Hall, Petrangelo, Doughty, or Kopitar. I mean, I am allowed to trade Kopitar. I don't think we're getting rid of Anze. I don't think we're getting rid of Dustin Brown at this point. Odds are Quick and Carter are going to be stuck here as well. So a lot of the you know, face of the franchise players for the Kings, they're going to be sticking around. I don't really envision a situation where we are able to get rid of them. But what we're going to do for the rest of this episode, we're going to open up the trade block, we're going to go through deadline day, and then we're going to call it an episode. And that'll lead us to finish up the regular season in the next episode. We know we're not going to be a playoff team. And we'll get through the draft as well, which hopefully will be an interesting one for us yet again. Uh, no real guarantees, of course, as far as how that's going to go down. Obviously, with the limitations that we have on the draft as well, it gets to be a little bit more complicated. But for now, let's sim towards the deadline. I'll try again on deadline day to make a move. We play that night against Montreal. I'll try again to make a move if I can. Uh, we get an offer for Jared Anderson Dolan, which obviously, no, that's not going to happen. Kaliev, Kaliev, I'm not getting rid of him either. We lose to Dallas, Zekoff, Grundstrom, and Wagner for Edler. Uh, no. No. Gleboff, Thomas, and Roy. Absolutely not. Let's see if we get an offer for anybody else. Bjorn Font and Kaliev. Nope. Now, see, these are the players that I expect the AI to be going in for. <sighs> Sergachev's locked out for the year. I don't want to use Sergachev in another series. I'm not getting rid of Anderson Dolan, of course, even for a first. Kempe and Wagner for Veselainen. No. Keep Kempe. Kempe for two firsts and Robin Leonard. That's an interesting one. That's a really interesting one, but Kempe. <sighs> wow, we might have to explore that. I mean, the thought, though, is Kempe is on a ridiculous contract. He is a legitimate top six option. You see the attributes there? I mean, he's going to be a decent top six option for us. He fits in perfectly perfectly on that second line with this current coach. But two first round picks and Robin Leonard. Leonard's 29. Are we going to be competitive in Leonard's cup winning window? I don't think we are. But with Kempe, he could be a part of winners down the road. Two first round picks obviously very attractive. But that's playing like the mystery box, right? Where it's like, oh, those two first-round picks could be anything. They could even be what Adrian Kempe is right now. That's a tough one. <laughs> the problem is, in this deal, I would have to be able to tack on a goaltender. I'd have to. Also, uh, that goaltender would have to be Jonathan Quick. Because I'm not allowed to play goalies out of their uh, spots. Uh, they'd be over the cap. I could retain on Quick, or Kempe for that matter, because that deal would be expiring a little bit earlier. So they would have to take Jonathan Quick for that deal to work out. Leonard would be our new starter. They're not interested in Quick. I don't think this would go through. 
If it does, oh God, two first round picks and we get younger in goal by six years. Two first round picks for Kempe. How good are the Golden Knights going to be? But what could those picks be? Is anybody with those two picks likely to become what Adrian Kempe is now? Are they going to accept this with Jonathan Quick added to the deal? Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't think they'd accept that. Uh, am I cool? Am I cool with that? Are, are you cool with... We just traded Adrian Kempe and Jonathan Quick for Robin Leonard and two first-rounders. 